Hello and welcome back everybody. Uh, today in geometry, we will be talking about uh, the idea of converse and also proof using overlapping triangles. Uh, so uh, in terms of what we're discussing is, uh, well, the following, what is a converse? And I think we kind of covered that back uh, from the very, very beginning. But, you know, just to reiterate one more time, because it's good to kind of circle back. And also uh, to give an example of an icky proof. So, you know, that is going to be uh, something to kind of consider, uh, something to look out for in just a little bit. Okay. All right. So first of all, let's go ahead and kind of like go back on the idea of converse just to remind you or to refresh your memory as to what it is. For any statement, uh, for any statement, if you have an if and then, if and then statement, uh, A implies B, then that means that B implies A is its converse. Back at the very, very beginning, we did the truth table just to see how this all works out. And it turns out that because the truth table for A implies B is not the same thing as B implies A, then that means that for any statement, its converse is not necessarily going to be the same thing. So here are some examples of that then. So in the first example, let's say that if I am a boy, then I like to shave my legs. Okay, whatever. Uh, then the converse of that statement would then be, if I like to shave my legs, then I'm a boy. Obviously, that's not necessarily true because my counterexample could be that I am a cat and I like to shave my legs then, okay? Because maybe cats like to shave their legs, but there are other counterexample. Here's another one that's a little bit more numerical and not as silly then. Uh, if I have x is equal to five, then x squared is equal to 25, which is definitely true. But the converse of that statement, which says that if x is squared is all right, uh, if x squared is equal to twenty five, then x is equal to five, and that right there, while it is true, then there, but there is also another answer to it uh, that could also work too. Because uh, what about if we have x is equal to negative five, right? So right there uh, is going to be my counterexample. Just because one worked uh, doesn't necessarily mean that it's the only one that's going to work. So uh, the idea here is that once again, if you have a statement and if you look at its converse, it could or could not be true. Back in the last section, we look at the isosceles triangle theorem and its converse. Uh, section, I think it was theorem 5-4 and 5-5. Five, five. Uh, it turns out that one, if one is true, the converse is true also. Uh, but here are some examples that is not unfortunately going to work out. So once again, the conclusion is not all converses are going to be true. That's going to be number one, first for a conclusion. My second conclusion is that if a converse doesn't work, well, just like anything else, if it's false, then provide a counterexample, and that's all you have to do. Just like what I did over here with x is equal to negative 5. Or maybe over here, uh, find my cat that likes to shave the leg uh, to prove that that's not going to be a boy then. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and look at the icky proof part. Uh, so then that way you can see uh, what I'm talking about. So here in this picture, uh, we have this nasty looking overlapping picture of uh, some triangles. And what I'm given are the following. Given that AD, sorry, uh, given that A is congruent to D, uh, EBC, the angle, is congruent to FCB, the angle, and AB is congruent to CD, I want to prove the following. Well, let's go ahead and mark each one up just to see what they're talking about. So here for the first part, uh, A is congruent to D. So that means that this angle is going to be congruent to this angle. Next, uh, I'm going to look at uh, this guy over here, uh, which says that the angle of EBC is congruent to FCB. So in terms of where that's located, uh, EBC, so that's going to be this angle right here, is going to be congruent to this angle right here. And finally, we have AB is going to be uh, congruent to uh, CD. And uh, in terms of where that's located in the picture, uh, let's see, AB is over here, is congruent to CD over here. Well, this is going to be pretty messy because definitely we have not seen anything like this before. But I like to think that, you know, because we're dealing with congruent triangles, then that's what we're aiming for, because that's the only type of proof that we know uh, that we've been doing so far and that we know how to do. So the question really is then, what are the two triangles that we're trying to prove are congruent? And how does that help us out in this case? Well, you might be able to see it if we isolate it. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Oh, and by the way, in terms of what I'm trying to prove, F is going to be congruent to E, so that means that I want to show that this angle is congruent to this angle. 
hopefully you guys can see this part right here. Let me isolate the two triangles that I'm seeing that most likely I want to show congruency for. The first triangle is this guy over here, which is ACF. Okay, so just isolating that triangle. And then the other triangle that I'm going to try to show that is congruent to this uh, one is going to be over here on the opposite side, which is going to be EDB. So notice what I mean by isolating the triangles or separating the triangles. So then that way you can see what is it that you're trying to prove. Now, let's go back to the given one more time just to see how does that apply to these two triangles then. First, angle A is congruent to angle D. So that's located over here. Uh, we also know that angle B, uh, or I shouldn't call it angle B, uh, but I can call it EBC, so that's going to be this angle, is congruent to FCA, which is going to be this angle. Now, judging by what I have right now, uh, looks like I have two angles that are congruent for these two triangles. So the question is, well, what's the last characteristic? And the only one that can come to mind is the side that is in between them. So that is to say, I want to show that AC right here is going to be congruent to BD right here. And I think we can kind of do that because look, AC, if you notice going back over here, is the same, it contains this piece right here. BD contains this piece right here. If I add in BC, what they have in common, then that would give me AC. It would then be equal to BD. And we're going to have to do a little bit of like, you know, segment addition, but that'll definitely get the job done. But nonetheless, these two triangles are going to be congruent by ASA. Uh, we can say that triangle AFC is then congruent to triangle DEB. And as a conclusion, now we can go ahead and say by the corresponding part, CPCTC, uh, that angle F is now congruent to angle E, which is exactly what I want. So let's go ahead and write the proof now that we have the outline. So as I said, first, I'm going to go ahead and say that angle A is going to be congruent to angle D. And then that right there is going to be the given. Next, we're going to focus on the sides then. Okay. So we first start by the given with AB is equal to CD. As I said earlier, we're going to go ahead and now add in BC from both sides. And that is going to be the addition property of equality because we're adding consistently. Then I'm going to recognize that the left-hand side is really just AB the entire length. Whereas the right-hand side is really just BD, the entire length. That is by segment addition postulate. Combining parts 3 and part 4 together, then now I can say that AC is equal to BD by transitivity. And that right there has now allowed me to say or shown that these two sides right here are going to be congruent to each other. Finally, we look at the last angle, which is going to be EBC is congruent to FCB. And that right there was just given. So as you can see on the side, by ASA, the two triangles are congruent to each other, and therefore by corresponding parts, angle F is going to be congruent to angle E, okay, by corresponding parts, CPTDC. All right, let's take a look at one last example, and this is something that maybe you should try just to kind of get the hang of it. Uh, here we have, again, a uh, situation where we have like a really weird looking figure, but nonetheless, a bunch of triangles. Uh, we are given that DA is going to be equal to CB. So then that means that uh, in terms of sides, these two are congruent to each other. Next, we are also going to say that uh, AB is perpendicular to DA. So that means that maybe I can stick a right angle somewhere. And AB is also perpendicular to CB, so I can maybe stick a right angle somewhere. In terms of where those somewheres are, well, you can probably see on the figure, that's going to be this guy over here and this guy over here. Uh, last thing I want to do is I want to prove that AEB is an isosceles triangle. And keep in mind, if it's an isosceles triangle, then that means that I probably want to show that the two sides are going to be congruent. Judging by what I have, most likely... I want to show that AE is going to be congruent to EB then. So that's kind of like my second to the last step. Now, as I said, what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and talk about the setup of it. And then afterwards, maybe you can go ahead and try to do the proof. If at any time you want to pause the video and try it for yourself, by all means, go ahead and do so. Uh, but if you're okay with me going forward, let's go ahead and take a look at it now. The two triangles that I'm looking at that are going to most likely be congruent or I want to show congruency for will be the following. First triangle is going to be the one on the bottom over here, 
which is going to be D, A, B. Second, the other triangle that I'm going to show that it's congruent to is going to be C, B, A. So right there, in terms of once again, what's given and what is it that we know? We again know that these two are congruent because of the given. Uh, because of the other two angles that are, uh, sorry, because of the other given, then that means that we actually have some right angles. And that's good because I can go ahead and mark those in. This is supposed to be a right angle. This is a right, supposed to be a right angle. And two right angles are congruent to each other because of that small little theorem, 4, 4, uh, which says so. And finally, for the last part, uh, we can probably sneak in the fact that AB is just congruent to itself. So then that means that these two triangles are congruent to each other by SAS. And once those two triangles are congruent to each other, in order to go to what I want, which is AB is equal to EB, then that means I probably want to look at this angle right here is going to be congruent to this angle right here. Those two angles are located right here for this triangle and right here for this triangle. Well, here, let me just kind of write out the outline for a time being. So first, I'm going to go ahead and show that triangle DAB is congruent to triangle CBA by SAS. Next, afterwards, I am going to go ahead and try to say that angle CAB is equal to or congruent to uh, DAB, and that is by corresponding parts. So you can see how it's always going to be some sort of congruent triangles and then some sort of corresponding part that's going to help us out. And the reason why we need those corresponding parts is, well, those corresponding parts are going to be opposite angles, which then allows me to use the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem to say that their opposite sides are going to be congruent to each other. So then that leads me into that second to the last step that I want, which is AE is equal to EB by the ITT converse. And finally, for the last piece, we can go ahead and say that triangle AEB is an isosceles triangle uh, by the definition of isosceles triangle then. Okay, so that right there is my outline. And then underneath it right here, well, this is going to be my proof. So here you can go ahead and take a look as I sure first did. Uh, proof by SAS, those two triangles are congruent to each other. Now, the only part that you need work on is probably the angle part because notice that we have to do a lot of jumping, a hoop jumping. We have to say that the two uh, sides are perpendicular. Then we have to say that they're right angles. And then afterwards, say that those two right angles are going to be congruent by, again, uh, theorem 4-4, which literally says that. But that's really the only hard part. Once you show the two triangles are congruent, then we can go ahead and say that the corresponding parts are congruent to each other as we want it. Then their opposite sides are going to be congruent because theorem 5, 5 or the ITT converse. And finally, triangle EAB is also an isosceles triangle. I'm sorry, not also, but EAB is an isosceles triangle by the definition of isosceles triangle. All right, so there